Kenner. Alex here. And I'm Alia. We have a fantastic show for you on this sweet Friday morning. Our first story comes from a first timer here on WHTV, Cam Clark. That's right. He has a story about the upcoming six block schedule that comes into effect next year. Take a look. Hey, Winnicona. As you may or may not know, the school is changing to a six block schedule. Let's see what some students and teachers have to say about it. I think it's probably a good idea because we get to keep electives, and I think electives are very important to students. I think it'll be good for kids that have a hard time paying attention, and the only thing it's going to be tough with are labs. I feel like, I don't know if that'd be like too long, too many classes to handle in one day. I don't like the six block schedule at all. I think it's going to make the classes shorter and it's going to be good. I think the six block schedule would be great because we'll have shorter classes. It's kind of cool because your classes are going to be shorter. There are many concerns and rumors with the new schedule, so I interviewed Mr. McGowan to get all the important details. Uh, starting next year, um, all math classes, at least freshman level, will be full year. Um, Algebra 2 will also be full year. Um, English in the freshman year will be full year. And then also be some science classes that will be full year. Mr. McGowan also noted that the school changed to three launches to have more time during lunch and in preparation for the six block schedule so that there if any adjustments that had to be made, they'd be fixed by next year. Also in preparation to the schedule, Winnicott will be having a 15 to 30 minute warrior block that will address SSR and other student needs. Well, there you have it, Winnicott. The six block schedule will definitely be an interesting change for next year. Wow. You remember when we had our first debut on WHTV? You mean like four weeks ago? <laughs> yeah, good times. Anyway, have you heard about our sick, nasty cross-country team? I sure have. I mean, who hasn't? In fact, I heard they were recently invited to an invitational. They sure have. Matt Tipton gives us a scoop on this event. The Manchester Invitational is a cross-country meet in which teams from high schools all over New England and New York compete against each other for racing awards for teams or individuals that perform the best. The Winnicott cross-country team, which consists of 50 runners, 30 girls and 20 boys, went to the Invitational with four runners out due to injuries or sickness. We've got a few kids that are injured and unhealthy. We just need to get them uh, back up to health and back up to speed and uh, by the end of the year I think we'll be doing well. According to runners, Deerfield Park is one of the hardest courses they run during the cross-country season. Part of the course goes up the backside of McIntyre's ski area and runners have to run up 300 vertical feet. The course there is very tough. It has a lot of hills and at one point we actually run up McIntyre's ski hill. So it's, uh, it's probably the toughest course that we have to run during the season. The hills, well, you have to run up a ski hill and that part is kind of killer. The hills are killer, but we had a lot of support and a friendly voice along the way really gets you through it. During the boys' 5K large school race, Justin Trott came in first. While during the girls' 5K JV race, Catherine Dumore came in second. And in the girls' 5K large school race, Kelly Arsenal came in 10th. Uh, Saturday, we went up there not knowing how good we were going to be, and then our girls did a phenomenal job and came in first in the large school race out of 29 teams. Our JVs did a phenomenal job, and then our, our boys' team also came in sixth out of 29 teams, which includes from all over New England. So it was a pretty special day on a difficult course against great competition. Uh, this is our fourth Manchester fourth. Invitational. Um, and we have several invitationals throughout the season, like the uh, Woods Trail Run and uh, Bobcat. It felt uh, great to win the large school varsity race because Dairyfield is my favorite course, so it was nice to finish that with a win. Congratulations to Justin Trott for that big win at the Invitational. If you want to see the team race, they will be racing at Portsmouth High School next week. They sure look good this year. That they do, Alia. That they do. Hey, Alex, have you written up your bucket list yet? I have. Um, I don't plan on dying anytime soon. I certainly hope you don't either. Well, you can never be too prepared. Wait, what? Shannon O'Hara brings us a story on these rather morbid lists. Let's take a look. Hey there, Wanna Cut It. This is Shannon O'Hara here. Many of us here at Wanna Cut It have long-term and short-term goals. However, some of these goals might be realistic. Others can be downright insane. And when these goals are added on to a list, we call it a bucket list. A bucket list is a long-term goal or set of goals we hope to accomplish before we die. 
I asked you, what are some things on your bucket list? On my bucket list, I want to play tennis at 5 in the morning. Take over the Statue of Liberty. I want to go on a high-speed cop chase. Getting in a police chase. I want to do that like eight-person bike at the Strip. I want to own a duck orphanage. I want to ride an elephant. To have a pet hedgehog. I want to do those um, paper lantern thingies. I want the people at Los Olas to know my order by heart when I walk in. On my bucket list is to go skydiving. To get a perm. Bucket lists are notorious for their outrageous tasks such as skydiving, performing in lion acts, and less dangerous tasks like getting kicked out of Walmart 50 ways or winning the lottery. There is even a movie called The Bucket List, which was released in 2007 and stars Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman who play two terminally ill men who leave a cancer hospital and set out to fulfill their goals on the bucket list. That's all for you today, Wanna Cut It. This is Shannon O'Hara, signing out. I'm still getting over the fact that you plan on dying on me. Don't worry, hon. I'm not going to. Okay, okay. You might want to take a tip or two from this next story, though. What is it again? It's a story we did together, remember? It's giving some advice on dating. Hey, I'm gonna cut it. I'm Alia. And I'm Alex. The do's and don'ts of dating have always been unclear, but we went around asking students of Winnicott it what they think makes up a good first date and what ruins it. Check it out. I hate when the other person is always on their phone. So, um, so, so how's your day? Uh, how's your day been? Yeah, it was good. You know, well, like, you want to talk to me here? Have you beaten level 97 on Candy Crush yet? Because I legitimately can't get past it. When they don't have enough swag. Sup? When girls talk too much. Alright, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I play lacrosse for an elite travel team based out of Boston. I've been playing for four years now, but... <laughs> it's been a big part of my life for a while now. It's cool, you know, I, uh, I play some wrestling. I yeah, I play basketball and soccer too. I'm I hate when a guy has bad table manners. <laughs> Don't be rude. So, uh, Ollie, how's your day? How, have you been? You, uh... <laughs> Don't pull a move too fast. <laughs> All right, when I got it, we hope that clears things up for you. Good luck if you have any dates in the near future, and have a great rest of your day. See ya. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wait, what do you mean I could take a tip or two? You know what? Now that I think about it, we don't follow most of those rules. Psh, who needs rules anyway? Well, when I got it, that's all we've got for you today. Have a great rest of your day. And an even better weekend. Bye. Peace.